I, I have to limit the amount of time I spend closeted because I have 300 guests out there. Yes, yes. so it's been, uh, so they will do that. So uh, thanks for meeting with Big Board. Uh, we've got Steve Jackson with us, and Steve is going to tell us all about uh, the uh, product launch for the infamous Kickstarter <laughs> and uh, for Ogre, and, uh, and also wanted to get a little bit of, of background from you about the, the, the genesis of the game and then what prompted you to go for something as, as big and fantastic as this, or, or was that? In insanity. It's <laughs> Long story. All right. The game goes back to 77. I started working on it in 76. I was working with metagaming at the time, and this was the first of the microgame line. The owner of metagaming mm -hmm. had had essentially a marketing theory, and it was proven out that there was an interest among hobby gamers for a very, very inexpensive game. He wanted to do it at a $2.95 price point. Right. And he had already done his print buying, so he said, you can have a counter sheet, thus and so, and a rule book, thus and so, with this many pages, and the map will be printed to one side, of a legal size sheet in one color. So, okay, well, you know, that certainly does take away a lot of your design decisions yes. right there. Right. So, Simplicity. Right. So if you're willing to work within the constraints, then, and later ones, uh, I mean, as the line developed and was successful, you, things like, well, we can have two colors on this map. <laughs> but uh, the line was well received, and, and right. that. That was the first one, and it was well received. People enjoyed it. Now, tell me about the transition from moving from original counters to actually having the minis, and what what prompted the, the move to the minis? The mini line actually goes back almost as far as the original game. Uh, Meta Gaming sold licenses to a couple of its lines to Martian Metals, which was. Right. Actually, not very far from where we're sitting at this moment. It was in Cedar Park oh. before Cedar Park was swallowed by Austin. Gotcha. Right. And uh, a short line of ogre minis was done. Uh, the ogre itself was sculpted by Forrest Brown, who owned right. Martian Metals. And the, the very few, unfortunately, smaller units that were released were sculpted by Randy Hoffa, who some of your viewers are going to know as uh, Mr. C and C. Right, right. And they were just wonderful. They're fantastic. I noticed out of the museum you had a number of the, over the original pieces there along with a lot of the other original artwork and, and concepts and yeah. new sets and things like that. They're fantastic. Yeah. So, so we, we had uh, obviously a very popular, I was chatting with uh, you know, some of the folks outside there who were happily unboxing and punching uh, the moment they, they uh, ripped the shrink on the boxes out in, in the lobby there, uh, long time players. And so they're, uh, they're bringing their kids in with them and this has really become quite a family event. What was the catalyst for doing something like this? I had wanted for years to do a big version of Ogre. It was something I needed to get out of my system. Okay. But the project wasn't progressing very well. And just too many demands on my time. Right. Cough, much cough. Right. And Phil Reed uh, suggested that we do it as a Kickstarter. And okay. uh, forced me to pay some attention to Kickstarter and right. see how it worked. Try this, and since I had already decided the project would happen and had some idea of its scope, uh, underestimating, but I had some idea, mm -hmm. I figured we'd be printing about 3,000 copies. Okay. So the Kickstarter goal was not set at what it would cost to print 3,000 copies. That wouldn't be appropriate because that was going to happen anyway. Uh, it was set at $20,000 because that was what would make it worthwhile to fulfill orders to this separate group outside the retail chain. Yes. Well, it blew past that in the first couple of hours. That was amazing. I, I tracked that pretty closely. Right. And 
So we set stretch goals, which made the game much nicer than I had originally planned. It really made me happy. For the one that means the most to me, I think, is that the maps are now single-sided rather than double-sided. Yes. So you can use them all at once rather than having to either buy two sets or flip them. Right, right. Which, um, was a, which was often a complaint sometimes for the earlier version. The you know, game comes with four or eight maps and you got you can't, can't play an eight map monster, you can play the four map monster. Right, well, it, right. yeah. Now you can, right? right. The, Those big battles over here. That, but realistically, nobody needs them. Okay, you hear that? You don't <laughs> need them. There is enough in that box. There's more than enough in that you box. Can, you can split it with your next door neighbor, never speak to him again, and you'll both have enough to play with. <laughs> now, tell me about the stretch goals, because they seem to come thick and fast. Did you have, did you have all of those planned out, or was there, no, was there we, frantic design going there on? There was frantic back? design going on. Uh, we, uh, in retrospect, we should have set those stretch goals at least twice as far apart. Mm -hmm. But we were all being too modest and pessimistic and saying, well, surely we've reached just about everybody we're going to reach with this. Right. Ha, 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 ha. No. Right. And in fact, uh, maybe a week before the end of the campaign, we just announced stretch goals are over. That's all. Right. If you want to support us further, uh, do so by telling your friends about this campaign and getting them to join because we've, we're not going to keep on adding stuff here. There's not a box big enough. Right. And most of the goals we set were not for Kickstarter only improvements. They were for improvements to everybody's set. And the great majority of the supporters were fine with that. Right. With, with their their payments going to make it better for everybody. Right. But which, there is some unique material. Yes, which I think uh, I think that approach drove more orders for you too, because I, I think it was an investment. I think people could see this was an investment for everybody, not just because I happened to be the lucky one who got in on the Kickstarter. I would like to think that. That was that was the that was the meme we wanted to reach, as it right. were. The other thing that drove it and made it thicker than expected was allowing high-level supporters to define counter sheets. Yes. There was the level at which you could put a counter sheet in the game and we'd work with you on what went on it. And there was the higher level at which you could define a counter sheet again you know, with our input. But uh, and by input, I mean psycho control to make sure that it worked <laughs> with everything else. Uh, but but we wanted to be flexible about it. So BGG has a giant lizard monster on their set. Right. Ogre didn't support giant lizard monsters, but he sure looks cool. <laughs> and you can write rules for him. Uh, That's great. That's great. But at that level, you had the 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 counter sheet that that you, the supporter, got. And uh, there are several little you know, cottage businesses uh, of selling ogre counter sheets. Right, right. And two of those supporters, uh, ACD Distribution and Board Game Geek, told me that for the launch party, we could just stuff the bags with their counter sheets and use them as swag. Oh, nice. Yeah, is nice. that awesome or that what? That is awesome. Okay, so all the, all the folks who've turned up today with swag, picked up their swag bag, they've got even more counter sheets yes. as they walk out the door. Yes. Fantastic. Oh, the way it worked out, and this is because of the generosity of those sponsors, everybody who bought into this party is leaving the door with a swag bag with a retail value notably more than they paid to get in. Excellent. That's we excellent. won't talk about the cost of the gas to get here. No, that's all right. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Have you had a lot of people coming from far and wide? Uh, we've had a number of people coming from, uh, let's see, it was a carload from somewhere in Missouri, right. a couple of carloads from Atlanta. Wow. I think we have some from farther away. Sure. Excellent. Excellent. Now, in your, in your uh, other interviews you've done with Wine Magazine that I've seen and some of the podcast interviews you've uh, given, uh, there's an inevitable question that pops up, and that, and it's 
partly ogre related, but uh, it's also what's what's next. Here comes the inevitable question. Yeah. Well, at some point we will do a Kickstarter for a Car Wars project because right. we promised to. Yes. Um, in fact, uh, one of, one of the stretch goals that we set was the, the stretch goal was the we will do another Kickstarter campaign, which made a few people go. Ah! You, you fiends! This is not how it's supposed to work. Uh, you can, and, but it made a lot more people say, "Oh wow, yeah, supporting more. Do that." Right. So oh, that's excellent. So I put a poll out on uh, I have my Facebook page for the big board and uh, on the blog. Right. And the oh, folks, the, the, the big question, the big question I asked was, you know, if you have one question you could ask Steve, what would it be?" And that was the question: When will Kickstarter be for Car Wars? A while. A while. Right. We've got to get through this back uh, here. It absolutely has to get. I've already made a whole lot of promises that, that they don't all have to be completely finished kept, but all of them have to be well and truly underway, right. and not require any more kicking or planning. And this, just, this has to be worked through. Sure. And at that point, if if we don't already know what the elements of the Car Wars Kickstarter are, at that point we have no excuse not to grind down and come up with a good description. Right. We have been running a forum for Ogre supporters only um, to talk about what they would like to see in Car Wars. And there are right. parallel forums for non-supporters because we're not, we're not turning down anybody's input, but we promised the supporters that they would have some exclusive access. Which is nice. Okay. Uh, and people are talking about what they'd like to see in the game. And of course you have spots all over the map, but, but we're beginning to see what it is people want. And that's going to be something and I don't know if people can have everything they want all at once. Mm -hmm. They would like at least as much complexity as the Car Wars compendium, you know, Car Wars Classic. But they want it to play faster. And there is no <coughs> complete consensus about what counterscale. There's going to be a lot of angst about mm. that before we're done. Right. So, uh, do you have any leanings or preferences for scale at this point? If it was your game that you were designing and you it didn't have to take it is my anyone, game and you I did it. design it. <laughs> and you yeah. didn't, if you didn't have to take anyone else's input was my final point of that. I'm not sure. Right. Um, I can make a real good argument for HO scale right. because so many people like to set up scenery, set up 3D scenery yes. and run it. Yes. And there's so much available in HO. I can make good arguments for a couple of other scales too. Uh, a lot of people use Hot Wheels cars to play Car Wars. But then there are a lot of people who just want the flat counter. I don't know what we're going to do. I really don't. And it may wind up being two standards as we did with some of the older things. Three standards really. Um, I had wanted to do the 3D units for the ogres and buildings and flat counters for the others with the color picture of the unit. Uh -huh. But as we worked through the, the post-campaign discussions with supporters, we did a lot of surveying and so on, we found out that there was a lot of interest in a set of counters for ogres that were relatively as big as the 3D ones but were flat. Some people just did not want hmm. to fool with the 3D counters. And one of the inside the box supporters said, I want, that's what I want my counter cheat to be. So we did it. And the other thing that happened, and it was not part of the set, it's a, a separately ordered <coughs> thing. A lot of people, it turned out, really liked the old counter design, which I've never been that personally enamored of because I'm no big deal as a graphic designer, and those were those were my graphic design. That was a very early graphic design. Yes, they were absolutely bare bones. <coughs> but some people liked them. 
And I don't hate them. I just thought, well, here's an opportunity to do something bigger that I can still read. Right. But there was a lot of public demand for the classic style counter set, just done bigger to fit on that map. So we did, and that set's available. Excellent. So I guess it's not impossible that the Car Wars rules might be created from the ground up to support more than one scale. Fascinating. Now that'd be interesting. Yeah, it's like any set of 15 millimeter miniatures rules can be upgraded to 25 or 28 or whatever you've got. Right, right. Just multiply. Sure. A little bit of math, right? Now, uh, a little bit of math once. No big <laughs> Exactly. What I noticed uh, out in the playtest area, there are a couple of uh, expansion sets being. Yes, played with for Ogre right now play, and tested. Played and with the assault packs. They look amazing. The assault packs, the new assault packs set on the frozen tundra and the uh, in, the, in Russia the, the, on, the, on the lakes and the, uh, the nuclear uh, the juggle set and the yeah. nuclear explosions uh, on, and killing hexes off and all sorts of stuff. So it's uh, exciting stuff that's coming over and above everything else. They have map overlays, map overlays which right. can yes. be popped on yes. anything. Okay. I got heavily into map overlays with the, the basic set. You can do an awful lot to right. the included maps with the overlays. Excellent. Okay. There are a couple of the original scenarios from GEV that play vastly differently. If you just plant a few hexes of forest here and open up a little clear space here, then all of a sudden... It's a whole new ballgame. Uh, right? right. It's, uh, it's no longer a chess opening. Everybody knows what you're doing until the dice are rolled. Gotcha. Oh, well, now it's different. Yeah, okay. And now if somebody's so inclined, they can just close their eyes, throw a few overlays at the map, and then take them where they are and line them up with the hexes and play. Excellent stuff. A lot of boxes back there, so I'm assuming that distribution will take uh, a, a little while before you get through the, we've, the backlog there. We've got something over 5,000 boxes here to ship out to supporters, right. less than 300 or so picked up today. today. And we'll get those out now just as soon as we can. Sure. And there's another 6,000 odd boxes sitting in Atlanta about ready to ship, and those are the distribution copies. But the street date on that is, if I remember right, December 6th. Kickstarter supporters are getting theirs first. Sure. Just in time for Christmas, then. So it sounds like everyone's going to have a great Christmas. Interviews are good. Thank you for watching, guys. Yeah, cool. Thank you. So I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to us, and I hope everything continues to go well. I hope so. <laughs> Steve, thanks so much. Uh, Christmas of blowing things up with giant tanks. Exactly. And that's the true meaning of Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I really appreciate it, mate. Thanks for taking the time to chat. Thank you.